Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2019 release Coco D. Coco Day. And yes, Coco D. Coco Day is how it's said in the film, just so you know. And you do hear it quite a bit in the film. Uh, and this is actually a Shudder exclusive coming to Shudder on Thursday, March 18th. And since that is the case, I'm putting my review out before it's there and it's a newer film. This is a no-spoiler review. Although, thematically, there's a little bit of a... I'll talk about at the very end what I think theme-wise is going on here, but won't tell you like events of the film or anything. So if you don't want that, then drop off towards the very end. So uh, anyway, like I said, this is coming to Shudder on Thursday, March 18th, which is actually the same day as they're getting the film Slacks, spelled S-L-A-X-X, -X, and I have a review up for that one as well. I do recommend it, but check out that review. Uh, written and directed by Johannes Nyholm, who also did the film the Giant, um, you might say, where is that name from? Well, this is a Swedish film, and that is where Johannes is from as well, so there you go. Now, very quick, quick synopsis. It's not going to be much at all because I don't want to give too much away with this film because a lot of the stuff in the film is very important to the overall experience and just the overall story of the film. So basically, it's about a couple who go out to camp in the woods as a way to kind of reconnect with each other and things start happening. And that's where I'm going to leave it because I would just say check this out. Now I will say this film is very heavily metaphorical. So if you're not into stuff like that, and that's kind of like the crux of the movie is the metaphor of it all. Um, if that's not your thing, if you don't like to have, you know, end the film and really, you know, think back on what was really going on from a metaphorical standpoint, this might not be for you, but if you are into that stuff, then this is definitely for you. Uh, not only that, but it looks really good. Um, my only big complaint uh, with the film itself, well, two two kind of complaints. One, it, one is, and this always, always bothers me, some of the camera work is shaky to the point of being kind of distracting at times. Not all the time, but at certain times. Um, you know, in certain portions of films it makes sense when it's kind of like unstable it's kind of shaky because it adds to the tension it adds to you know the confusion of what's going on and there is some of that in this film but there are also moments where that's <clears throat> excuse me that's not what's going on in the film and it's too unstable it's too shaky and that's distracting so that's just one of my pet peeves that might not you know bother as many people as much but that's one of the things I don't like. The other thing I didn't really like about this film is the pacing is a little bit too leisurely, in my opinion. But I was definitely willing to forgive that because, in the end, it's a really good story. It's the whole metaphorical aspect of it. Um, I just started thinking about what was that scripting like for that film. And it's a really well-written, very artistic, imaginative script for that reason. And it's pulled off pretty, pretty well. Um, and this is one of those instances that shows you that, you know, having the same person who wrote it direct it can really help with the translation of what's on page to the actual screen. So pretty awesome. Um, it's got an odd feeling from the very start of the film and it, it is not a straightforward film. It is, it has some odd aspects to it. So just know that, uh, I got a very heavy kind of David Lynch vibe from the very first scene in the film. Now, it's not super Lynchian or anything like that, so don't think it's going to go down that road. There are, you know, maybe some small things kind of borrowed from David Lynch feel-wise, but no, I the, from the very first scene, I was like, oh my god, I think this is going to be a very David Lynch-type film. It's not. Don't worry. It's, it, it really isn't. Um, but I will say, if you note, <clears throat> the scene in the very beginning, the very first scene, cryptically symbolizes... The events of the film it it really has a lot of weight to the film and i'm not going to say anything past that but just know and you know me pointing this out to you i know you'll then pay more attention to that scene but it's not going to spoil anything at all because there's no way that anyone watches that opening scene and can foresee how that is important to what's actually happening in the film you will get that by the end of the film and there is in the very very end the scene that transitions into the end credits, that it should be a very big, you know, aha moment for a lot of viewers that kind of get it, that, that then see, ah, this is what the metaphor is. 
this is what's been going on the whole time. I get it. I, I definitely get it now. So that's kind of nice. And maybe for that reason, the fact that they have that scene, this might be a little more accessible to people who typically don't like these heavily metaphorical films. So maybe give it a shot if you're not typically into those. Just saying. Um, the music is pretty minimal in this, and I really like that. I always comment on this. I hate heavy-handed music in film because it has a tendency to just kind of beat you over the head and tell you what to feel and what to think with a film, where I just like it when it's more restrained. It's kind of used as like an accent to scenes, and this film does a really good job of having these moments where it just drops the music and it just adds so much more gravity to what's really going on in the film, especially when it's more um, high stakes moments or emotional moments, things like that. You know, as a viewer, you kind of you feel that there's more gravity to it. You're kind of left to yourself to figure out how you feel and to kind of think about what's going on a little bit more as opposed to if you have, you know, heavily playing music that's signaling to you, this is how you're supposed to feel right now. I don't want that. Like, I want to be able to feel conflicted in a scene if I happen to feel conflicted in a scene, not have the music kind of grab my hand and lead me down a certain path. So I love that this film does that minimal music use. It's smart. And like I said, it adds gravity. And in this film, it certainly does that. Um, a major event in this film comes very early, and it's actually one that I will typically kind of roll my eyes at and go off on a tangent about how I don't like things like this being used in film, but I am willing to forgive it because it does make sense within the context of the film. It feels, early on to me, it felt kind of like a cheap thing, and usually it is used in that way, but I was definitely willing to forgive it, and I kept an open mind because I was like, well, I'll see how it goes in the end. It's not like something like, if you've seen it, the film Arrival, you know, there's something used in the film Arrival at the very end of the film. And I was just like, oh, my God, come on with this. And that's cheap. I hate that film, by the way. I know there are probably a lot of people who are like, oh, my God, Arrival is so good. That's fine. I'm glad you liked it. I freaking hated it <laughs> for many reasons. But anyway, that's not about it's not about this. Um, I think that it was used fine. It was used just fine in here. There's an interesting kind of paper shadow art that's used in this uh, to cover scenes. And it looks really, really cool. It really looks awesome. I love this this artistic use. Um, and it's also used to kind of signify something that otherwise would be really hard to actually put on film. So I think it was a good kind of workaround for having to do bigger and more complicated things. Uh, but it just looks so cool. And it's mesmerizing. It really is. And actually, I would kind of say that to a degree, the whole film is kind of mesmerizing. It kind of just like grabs your attention and just doesn't let go. And, and one of the big reasons being not only because it looks the way it does and, you know, the music use, I think, also has a lot to do with it as well. But you kind of just never know what's coming next. Like it really creates this air of anything could happen. And you're kind of on the edge of your seat the majority of the time, even though it's at a leisurely pace. Because you're like, I don't know what's going to happen next. And you're very interested to see what happens. At least I was. And it pays off. Trust me, it pays off in the end. Uh, obviously, you know, there are definitely going to be people who don't like it. There will definitely be people who like it even more than me. And some people will be eh about it. But that's every film. Um, there's a flash forward. And you can see kind of a marked, dif a marked difference in characters, which I thought was interesting. It ends up being kind of a jarring moment for the viewer but it's important to kind of note those moments in the film and you'll kind of understand why when everything gets is said and done at the end there is a bit of a wackiness that emerges to this film and that's kind of set up a little bit in the very first scene of the film but it it happens a little bit more but it's kind of like this dark wackiness so it doesn't it doesn't feel out of place it doesn't mess with the feeling of what's going on and it doesn't mess with the horror aspects of the film so I was fine with it. Um, the film is not linear. So if you're not, you in know, in, in ways it's not linear, in ways it kind of is linear. You'll see what I mean if you watch it. Um, so if you're one of those people who just wants like a straight story that just plays out pretty easy, this is not necessarily going to be the film for you. So just letting you know up front. But like I always say, every film is worth watching at least once. That way you can make up your own mind about how you feel about it. 
Um, yeah, like I said, leisurely pace. So the shadow, the paper shadow art stuff comes back later in the film, towards the end of it. And the combination of the artistry, the music, and the message makes for an extremely powerful moment in this film. And that is pr my favorite moment in the film. And that's kind of really what brought everything together for me with it. And I, I knew where it was, what it was trying to get at metaphorically, but that confirmed what I was thinking and it kind of expanded upon it. And I just love that moment. I think it's wonderful. The very last scene, oh, oh like I said, this the very last scene bleeding into the end credits, that will be the big aha moment for a bunch of people. Um, this film show, uh, shows at a few points that choosing to not have music in a scene can create gravity. Oh, I'm, I, my apologies, I already talked about that. So really, I only have one last thing to say, and this is the thematic thing, so I don't know if you want to know it or not know it. it. It could ruin some aspect of the film, but it's not going to ruin the actual events of the film or your overall experience, definitely. It will not. Uh, there's a theme about trauma and how it can drive a relationship apart if people are individually consumed by that trauma. It also further has that ignoring shared trauma while focusing on your own will eventually lead to an unpleasant reckoning of sorts, which can kind of manifest in many different ways. So I, uh, for, the, for that reason, I think um, this film would be great to, to kind of pair with the film After Midnight, if you've not seen that one, which I have a no-spoiler review for on my channel and is on Shutter at the moment. Um, another way to go with a double feature with this film would be, since the film Slacks is coming out the same day on Shutter, I would say just watch Slacks and this film together. Back to back. Uh, they're very different experiences. Very different experiences, but they're both very good. And actually, I'm going to give them the same rating because they're both really, really well done. So out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm giving this a four star rating. This is one you should definitely see. Shutter has been doing a really good job lately, uh, for the most part. Not completely, because there was one I had a review on recently, Stay Out of the Attic, that I was not, not really a fan of. But... For the most part, they've been doing really well, especially with their exclusives. It's their originals that are a little more iffy. Although Slacks is Slacks is a Shutter original, so. But anyway, uh, do do me a favor and hit that subscribe button if you can, and you can. It literally takes you a second. That is your way to repay me, um, and I am always very grateful for that. Whenever someone does subscribe, I get an email and I get to see your profile, and I take a look at that and I say I'm very grateful to this person. That's awesome. I legitimately do that, and. Um, you can put comments, spoiler comments are fine, um, just know that you can put them down there and we can kind of talk back and forth about the film if you want. But if you're going to hit the subscribe button, also hit the notification bell, then you'll know whenever I'm putting up more, you know, movie reviews like this or unboxings or haul videos or random topics, whatever. But regardless, I thank you for taking your time to check this out and until next time, keep it brutal.